Hello, I'm Dan Oltrugge, founder and administrator of the Space Safety Coalition and the director of the Center for Space Standards and Innovation. My sincere thanks to the Amos Conference Committee for giving me the opportunity to discuss how commercial best practices contribute to long-term sustainability within today's complementary system of top-down and bottoms-up space governance. This chart shows a top-level view of our complex space governance framework. This is what's known as a virtual cycle in that all parts of this framework work together. At top middle, you can see the UN Copius, where the 21 long-term sustainability of space activities guidelines were welcomed with appreciation by the UN General Assembly in June of 2019. These guidelines are an important step forward. In terms of implementing these guidelines, the UN General Assembly well noted that they encourage states and international intergovernmental organizations to voluntarily take measures to ensure that the guidelines were implemented to the greatest extent feasible and practicable. A mouthful there. But let's not overlook the potentially large contributions that the commercial space industry can make to space situational awareness and space traffic management and space safety. It is precisely under this UN copious encouragement that I'd like to highlight an important industry-led space sustainability activities from multiple organizations. Consider the evolution of global space treaties, guidelines, standards, and national regulatory instruments over our 62-year history of space activities. One can assign a score along the vertical axis for how stringent or demanding the clauses of a regulation or a guideline are in relation to how compulsory those clauses are on the horizontal axis. Also note that the color scheme at the upper right, as we step through this evolution, depicts the category of the type of policy or organization which is being implemented. It is against this backdrop that we can characterize our existing global space governance framework and its contributions to educational, aspirational, or commercial, foundational, and regulatory governance. While we acknowledge that this simple portrayal of governance is undoubtedly incomplete and only notionally representative, it is effective as a demonstration of how the various instruments complement and interact with each other. The picture conveys an important message. Institutions from all four of these categories are essential in ensuring the long-term sustainability of space activities. So here are the areas, again, they're all important and complementary. Now plans have been filed to build, launch, and operate over 107,000 spacecraft just within the next 10 years alone. This animation is based upon 107,000 plus spacecraft applications filed with the ITU and the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, or in a few cases announced in the media. We fully realize that only a portion of these applications will yield an operational spacecraft, but even if only 20% of those constellations are realized, we could easily see an active space population in the next decade that is 10 times larger than is flying today. This year alone, we are on track to see the active space population nearly double. So with that backdrop of our global space governance framework and transition to a largely commercial spacecraft population in the next 10 years, let's now examine some examples of how the commercial space community actively works to help ensure the long-term sustainability of space activities. One example is the Space Data Association, or SDA, which has been operational now for a decade. The SDA provides safety of flight services spanning all orbital regimes to 30 operators who collectively fly 780 spacecraft. The Space Data Center that we manage for the SDA provides geographic diversity, computational security, a robust legal framework, very high availability, ongoing forensics, quality checks, and comparative SSA analyses. The SDC has also evolved to be one of the largest clearinghouses globally for spacecraft operator data. As a second example, the Space Safety Coalition is a coalition of the willing with like-minded entities working to develop, publish, and maintain a set of orbit regime agnostic best practices for the long-term sustainability of space operations. Although non-normative, these best practices are generally applicable to all spacecraft, regardless of physical size, orbital regime, or constellation size. 
in advance of treaties and regulations, signatories endorse and agree to promote and strive to implement SSC best practices to ensure the safety and commercial viability of space activities. I'd like to now give you a quick overview of the SSC's best practices document and its contents. 37 space operators and organizations originally got together under the initial auspices of the Global VSAT Forum, or GVF, to work and develop consensus best practices. This development was initially spurred by concerns of unpreparedness for impending proliferation of large constellations. But as we have led and collaborated on this initiative, the document scope expanded to span all phases of spacecraft, including mission design, launch, checkout, space operations, and disposal. There are two parts to the SSC's best practices document. Part one is one that we don't see any other organization going to, which is the endorsement of existing international best practices and standards, including IDC guidelines, UN guidelines, ISO and CCSDS standards. So that very embrace of existing standards and guidelines is huge. There's a lot of good standards and guidelines already in existence in the international community. The second part contains 40 additional best practices not captured in current IDC, UN, or ISO documents, yet seen as critical to maintaining safe space operations in all orbital regimes. These aspirational clauses reflect voluntary, more stringent best practices to help ensure LTS. Now, given this document and its contents, you may wonder how well aligned the Space Safety Coalition Best Practices document is with the 21 newly endorsed UN LTS guidelines, as denoted by the green-filled cells in the figure on the left. Existing international standards are already well aligned with many of the LTS tenets, as shown here. In a similar way, on the right, you can see that the Space Safety Coalition 40 Aspirational Best Practices is also highly relevant to and well aligned with these LTS guidelines. The SSC initiative provides an effective grassroots working level implementation of a majority of these guidelines in an aspirational construct. This implementation includes guidelines for the sharing of space data, active collision avoidance, using responsible launch service providers, minimizing casualty risk, supporting space debris and mitigation research, registration of space objects, international cooperation, and capacity building and awareness. Now I'd like to give you a quick statistical look at how the SSC has evolved since its formulation at last year's AMOS 2019. At its inception, the Space Safety Coalition comprised 18 space organizations. Since that time, participation has more than doubled, with 45 space operators and relevant global industry stakeholders from 12 countries having endorsed this industry-led view of the current set of policies and best practices for space operations sustainability. Participants represent a diverse set of organizations from across the global space enterprise, including foundations, industry associations, analytical service providers, legal firms, space insurers, on-orbit space servicing, active debris removal companies, and SSA and STM service providers, launch providers, manufacturers, and spacecraft operators. That is a mouthful. But it's something that I'm very excited about because it means we really do have a diverse set of organizations participating. This is a breakdown of SSC endorsees by organizational type and by country. You can see on the left that the biggest set of endorsees is operators. And on the right, about half of the endorsees are from the US, but the rest are from 11 countries worldwide. This shows the continued growth of the SSC with time, and we just added operators from Asia, bringing our total to 45. This chart reflects the current broad categories of best practices that the current document has. The blue bars are indicating that current content. But then we have also been talking to our endorsees and participants to see what additional best practices and enhancements we should make to this set of, of best practices. And uh, those are shown in yellow. 
So you can see that there is a high priority to address and uh, build best practices for anomaly root cause investigation, beacons and condemning intentional fragmentation, rules of the road, security, space data exchange, and SSA analytics, collision detection, avoidance, and STM. I'd now like to tell you about some of the engagements we've had in the international community with the Space Safety Coalition. There has been, I can say, very much international interest in, in this uh, approach and the like-minded nature of the SSC. So here you can see some of the many venues where we've had the Space Safety Coalition invited to participate, uh, give a talk or be on a panel. And uh, we've been very excited for the level of involvement and interest in the Space Safety Coalition. So in summary, I've now showed you two examples with the Space Data Association and the Space Safety Coalition on how the commercial community can contribute to our global space governance framework. The Space Safety Coalition welcomes the participation of space entities who have a direct and material interest in space safety and sustainability. I would love to talk to you after this virtual talk to see if you're interested in participating in the Space Safety Coalition and you can join us and help us build a sustainable space future. Thank you very much.